Hello everyone, David here. Finally, a new full-length mastering course. In this one, we're gonna break down the mastering session for the song Adieu by electro dance clash dark pop artist Sidney Vallette. Amazing artist with whom I had a long relationship. I did many, many songs for him. I'll put the links in the info box down below. You will find all his music and his live shows. The full course will be available for Mixbus TV members. A small part of it, of course, will be available for everybody free on YouTube. If you wanna see the full course and all the other mixing and mastering courses, click the join button down here and become a member. We'll hear the mix before and after mastering and we will break down all the processing, all the plugins, all the analog outboard and we have several pieces with all the settings and of course we'll explain the thought process and the why of every single move. Let's get started. All right, this is actually an extended club version of the single, uh, so it's a pretty long song, it's uh, almost seven minutes, so I'm not gonna play the entire thing, but I'm gonna play right now the mix, which is the yellow track that you see here, versus the master, which is the purple track below it. The mix was pretty good to begin with, which is always nice, but uh, there was definitely room for improvement, and not that matters that much, but the final result, as you can see, measures roughly minus six LUFS, short term, and a minus seven uh, long term. Keep an eye on the screen when I switch between the mix and the master, although uh, you will definitely hear it. And keep in mind that I lowered my master of more than five dB, which is three dB lower than where the mix peaks. So I don't fool you with level. So keep in mind the master would be actually 5.4 dB louder <laughs> than what you hear here. And maybe I will put it back to zero and I will give you uh, the comparison with also the level difference. Here we we go. Okay, you already get an idea. Let's go to the chorus part. And if we bring the volume back to zero, this would be the actual uh, level difference that we have between the two. Now the level is gonna be a lot louder, so turn down your speakers or your headphones. So this was the difference between the mix and the master. Now let's take a look at the processing and what did I do? I can actually try to boost it a little more so you can hear it in action. Okay, so you can hear it's quite different from straight up equalization, which just turn the volume up of a certain band. It makes it denser, it just makes it more exciting, bigger in this case, but it's in parallel. So it doesn't mess up with anything that is good in the mix already. That's one of the reasons because I, I really, really love it. I wanna explain these because usually this is how I use these two bands on the SPL. I use the first one, the low mid one, for the knock when I want the power that translates on small speakers, right? And then I use the low frequency for the really deep low end. In this EQ, uh, differently from the original Pultec, you can change from shell to bell and uh, we are doing a two click, this is not 2 dB, this is two click, uh, 18K in shelf mode, this is as straightforward as it gets, just simply enjoy how beautiful the top end becomes. The 
the point here is not to impress you. The point here is to add life, to feel the EQ when you turn it off, not when you turn it on. When you turn it on, at least this is how I ideally see mastering, you shouldn't hear that much of a difference. You should hear the difference when you turn your processing away and just the track now becomes lifeless, okay? I really love the top end of, of the Empress. I love the entire EQ. The mid band is amazing, but uh, sometimes can be too colored. So it's, again, one of those things is, that's why we need uh, multiple units. Now we are compressing with a 670. I have the mastering version, so everything is a click. The records are super easy. You can see I drive the input a little bit because that's what the mojo is. And then in this case, I'm using time constant one, which is the fastest and surprisingly enough 50% of the time the one I prefer because this compressor is so musical that you can get away with fast settings um, six would be my other choice uh, the other half of the time with the three time variable for the release and two once in a while it works uh, very well as well the three and four and five are usually too slow for modern music unless it's a ballad anyway the key here is to tailor the compressor to react to a certain range and to tailor the DC threshold this is what makes this compressor so versatile in combination with the threshold I can drive it and have the right amount of compression that I want but we are touching not more than 1 dB and a half. Okay, once again, this is a little more obvious of a, of a difference, but you still feel it more when you take the compressor out. Okay, and the last, piece of hardware adds that extra 3D element to the song is Spacecraft on the Moon. And if you are on YouTube and the video ends here, <laughs> click the join button down there, become a Mixplus TV member, and access this and all the other mixing and mastering courses. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.